I'll just focus on New York. The nearly a quarter of all the children in this state are growing up in poverty. New York City is more than a quarter. In the neighborhood of the South Bronx, that where I've been working all these years, it's closer to three quarters. In terms of children's overall well-being in economic terms, New York State ranks 32nd out of 50 states. How do you begin to challenge the effects of poverty upon the lives of children? So I'm going to restrict myself to three specific areas that on the basis of my own experience have always seemed most critical. First of all, intensive medical attention from the time of birth and ideally, ideally from the prenatal period would be my first priority. Long before they enter school and then continuing in all the years thereafter, we need to guarantee that every child is provided thoroughgoing screening for visual and auditory problems, continuous screening for psychological development, immediate treatment for respiratory problems. I might say pediatric asthma is endemic in, in the South Bronx, at least in the neighborhood where I've been working. Children I knew in that neighborhood were wheezing in their classes at school, but the local hospital, which was so understaffed that it twice lost its accreditation, offered almost no preventive care. Thoroughgoing dental care should be a high priority as well. Um, I have no children who sit in class all day with rotting teeth, bleeding gums. These children need the continuity of personal physicians who know them well and know the total picture of their needs rather than an endless round of ever-changing clinic personnel. Second priority, every child in poverty, in my belief, deserves the same high level of early childhood and preschool education uh, that the children of the affluent receive. New York State, as you may know, boasts of something known as universal pre-K, right? When I first heard that term, maybe more than a decade ago, I thought, wow, that isn't that wonderful? Universal pre-K. Um, how come the little ones I know in the Bronx don't get it? Well, it turns out that universal pre-K is a funny phrase. It's it's a kind of or, it's 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 Orwell language. <laughs> Remember him, um, George Orwell? It's um it's double speak. In fact, less than half of eligible four-year-olds receive a preschool opportunity, usually for half a day. On a national basis, in spite of the promises and good intentions of the president, only about half of eligible three and four year olds are receiving Head Start. In view of what we know about brain development and the nurturing of social skills in those first few years of life, the damage that we're doing now to children by robbing them of that early opportunity isn't just an act of ordinary thievery. It's worse than that because it's irreversible. A little girl, three years old, will never have the third year of her life again, right? Uh, this is it. You have it once, and then it's gone forever. And all the promises of politicians in Washington or Albany can never give you back those years again. The love and tender nurturing of early and enlightened preschool education are good for the children of our wealthiest physicians, most prosperous attorneys, and our most aggressive Wall Street financiers. Then they're every bit as good for the poorest child of the poorest black, Latino, or white woman in America. My third priority has to do with families. Here's the part that I think is most important. What's really needed in my belief, I've said this for many years, is an entire organized echelon 
of active interventionists, what I would call a little army of ingenious and devoted and non-patronizing people who can reinforce these families without frightening and threatening the mothers. So the parents will trust them. Um, I, I call them connectors to the world of power, uh, connectors to the kingdom of effectiveness. And there are philanthropic groups that, that, that do this, or try to do this. But the thing is, all these are acts of charity, basically. These are acts of phil philanthropy. And, you know, philanthropy, charity is a beautiful thing. Uh, I never turn it down. <laughs> but um, charity, my friends, is not now and never was a substitute for systematic justice. Civilized society simply cannot leave the destinies of families to the unpredictability of philanthropic individuals.